Hey guys, it's Barrett with the Gimpy Camper. So we finally did it. We got our solar on this bad boy here. So we had a we had a kit already that we had for our other camper. It was the Renogy 300 watt premium solar kit. And I didn't use it that long on the other camper before I decided to, to upgrade campers. And so I took it all off and I kept it. And the goal was to put it on the new camper. Now, first of all, before you go into buying a bunch of stuff like that, even the generator or anything like that. You don't want to just buy a camper and start buying all this stuff, okay? Because I probably even bought the generator before I really wanted to, knew I was going to use it as little as I do. Let's say that. So what happens is, you know, I want to do more off-grid type camping. Well, in eastern Tennessee, there's not that many spots. And so it's not like BLM land out west where you can just go take your camper anywhere you want to and just hang out for the weekend. You know, most of the places that you can go in eastern Tennessee with that you can at least fit a camper in and take your camper are going to be campgrounds. And I would say a very high percentage of those campgrounds have power included in them. Um, and then water is kind of a mix of 50-50 there. And sewer is usually not going to be the case unless you stay at a high-end resort or somewhere like that or some private campgrounds, okay? Which, all that's fine with me. Like I say, I would rather go out and just stay out in the middle of nowhere. But that wasn't the what I was able to find. There were a couple of places like Ray Springs and Jackson Island here in uh, eastern Tennessee that I was happy with doing that type of stuff. And I'll put a link to uh, those videos up in the corners here. So just check those out if you're in the East Tennessee area and you want to stay somewhere nice on the lake without having to uh, pay somebody to stay there because they're free. With that, though, there is no power, okay? So anyway, back to the, the purpose of the video. So we got our panels on. We got three 100-watt Renogy solar panels. They're, uh, the, they're not the flexible panels. They're the regular rigid panels. I have them mounted on the front of the camper here, and they are fixed mounted. I don't have them on anything that tilts or anything like that. Because I learned after I bought these, like I say, there's not a whole lot that you can use them for in camping in our, in our area, at least. So what I've learned is that I do want them because it keeps the batteries charged on the rig. I don't ever have to worry about that. In the places that we do go to and we dry camp, then it does help then, as well as we have the generator, but we might not have to run the generator as much if we got the solar charge in the batteries. So the batteries always stay charged up. I didn't do a uh, another upgrade during this, and that's kind of what kicked all these projects off is I had two golf cart batteries in here and they got too low and I think they fried and I didn't want to, they weren't holding the charge that well, and I didn't want to go all through that again. And so it was July 5th. I looked up online. I was like, what can I get a decent battery for? And I just happened to see that Costco had their sale on the Lion Energy 1300 UT, I think is what it's called. You know, they retail for about $9.99, and Costco had them on sale for $700 a piece. And that is a ton of money for batteries however if you do your research you'll learn that it's probably the cheapest option in the long run especially when you take into consideration that they have a lifetime warranty on these batteries i think it's like after 35,000 charge cycles they guarantee that it's got 80 or 85 percent of the capacity left so Essentially, you're not going to have to buy another battery probably for the life of your rig. So that's why I stepped up to that. I got two of those and it really hurt. It really hurt, but I got two of them and I've been happy with them so far. Um, they will work down to, uh, they'll charge down to 32 degrees and I moved them inside my, my storage bay. And so I think that they're the reflectics and stuff that's in there with the winter camping system i think for most of the time here in eastern tennessee it does dip below freezing some mostly during the night but i think that they'll work fine right there if they'll actually work and give you power uh, quite a bit below freezing but 
they will only charge down to freezing. So what we ended up doing, I'm just going to go through the whole system here. So we mounted the three panels on top. I mounted those down with well nuts, and then I put Dicor over the top of that. That did make me nervous. So another video that we're going to have here in the near future is I did go ahead and decide to uh, call up RV Roof Armor, RV Armor, and I've talked to them, and we're going to put a, a, one of their roofs on this bad boy, and that way I don't ever have to worry about the roof again. Because when you drill like 30 holes in the roof, it kind of messes with your head, even though you're pretty sure that you got everything sealed up good. All it takes is one little pinhole to run your world, and we don't want that. So I think that their system's good because they give you a lifetime warranty with it. And that, by the way, is transferable from what I read. It goes with your VIN number, with your camper. It remains when you sell the camper. They still have a warranty for it. So that's a, that's a good point. It's expensive, but it's quality, and that's what you get. So anyway, so I put the three panels down. I have a fuse in the hot side, the positive side coming out of the panels that's uh, like 10 amps. It's the inline fuse that comes with the Renogy kit. And I have the, the hot wire, which is red, and the negative wire, which is black, coming down. I drill the hole right next to the vent that comes up out of the bathroom. And it took some doing, but I got the wires to pass down into the storage area. And when I got the wires down into the storage area with the fish tape, I actually had to put like a a piece of metal i think it was a wrench or something that i had on there to to weigh it down enough to get it down there um because you had to go through a little bit of insulation and all that stuff but i got that down and i uh, used a cover on top that the wires go through i have dicor all around that and the wires come down they go across at the top portion the ceiling part of the storage bay to the very front where I have my battery bank. So I have my two batteries there. I have uh, put some L brackets, which are just aluminum um, right angle pieces that I cut about six, eight inches a piece. I screwed three of those down, two on the sides and one on the front so they wouldn't slide around. So the wires come down in the storage, they run across the top of the storage. Then the wires are routed over to the charge controller which I have mounted right by the door of the storage, okay? Then out of the start charge controller, they go to the positive goes to another fuse. Uh, I think it's a 30 amp fuse, and it goes from there over to a bus bar. I decided to use bus bars because at first I had all these positive wires on the batteries and it looked horrible. So I added some bus bars and that cleaned it up a lot. So and there's a wire that goes from the bus bar to the battery. And so that's how it gets charged, okay? Well, then I have a 750 watt inverter. And so I just had that already. It's not a pure sign. It's not the greatest anything. But the main reason that I wanted an inverter, which I already had, and I think it'll work fine. It's worked for like 20 or 30 minutes, but I've not used it overnight. But I want to be able to use my CPAP. So we're going to try that and make sure it works. But the uh, wires go from the battery to the inverter and that's also mounted in the basement but from the inverter i have some romex cable that i put an extension cord end on that's plugged into the inverter goes back up runs across the same channel where the solar wires came in and goes up into actually the kitchen sink area with the plumbing and i made a hole in the bedroom wall and put one outlet there that's wired into that romex wire so basically that means I have one outlet in my bedroom that's going to run off that inverter for up to 750 watts, which works for me. I didn't want to get a real big inverter because I already told you there's not a lot of places that I can go to and dry camp anyway. This is mainly for travel days on longer trips where we pull over at a Bass Pro or Cabela's or Cracker Barrel. And I can use my CPAP without having to run the generator. So that's what that's for. Now, that's pretty much all there is to that, but I did put a battery monitor in. The battery monitor, I bought an extension for. I didn't wanna like way overdo it. I wasn't gonna go with the Victron because I just wanna make sure that the batteries are charged. And the issue 
was going to be with no matter what I went with is most of them go through a shunt. So your negative cables on your battery, you have one cable from your negative side that goes to the shunt and then everything else goes to that. I have, uh, the way mine's set up is I have the battery negative going to the shunt and then the shunt going to a bus bar with all the negatives attaching to that point. But the problem with that is that you have to run a wire and it looked like even with the expensive Victron when you had to run a wire, but it did have the Bluetooth app, which would help so you didn't have to see it. But the problem was, is I wanted to mount it in my living room where the stairs are, where my controls and everything are. But I tried to fish a, a fish down through there to see if I could get the wire and the fish actually got stuck. Luckily it was a cheap nylon one, so I just had to cut it off and leave it in the wall. So I didn't want to go through that. I could have pretty easily used the same track that I used with the outlet in the bedroom and put it higher and had it on our bedroom wall, which would probably be a pretty decently easy solution. However, I read a lot of reviews that said it's really bright, don't put it in your bedroom. Now, most of the time when I go to look at this, it's gonna be sitting in storage. Um, and I'm just gonna go make sure that the battery's charged, that the solar's doing its job. And I've got these uh, fans on that they're running and everything's just working the way it's supposed to. So what I decided to do is take the path of least resistance and I installed the battery monitor in the storage area. And I just had some extra scrap metal laying around, so I cut out a, a piece and I used a hole saw and I've mounted it up in the corner of the storage door just hanging down. To me, it looks like it was made to go there. I just spray painted that piece of metal black and I think it looks great. So for the functionality for me, it won't be bothering me in the bedroom and I can go check on the camper during the day. I don't have to get up in there where it's usually, you know, really hot in the middle of summer. I can just open the storage door. I can see exactly how the battery's doing. I can see if, uh, if there's more sun coming in than what the draw is from the fans and stuff going out. And I can just keep a close eye on it. And so for my situation, that worked out well. So, you know, I'm not a professional at this. This is just the way that I did my system. And I think it works well for me and what I intend to use it for. And so, you know, I just want to tell you guys that like the solar itself, I got the kit so that I wouldn't have to put that much thought into it because I've never done anything like that before. But if you buy the kit that's got the controller and the fuses and everything like that, no matter who it's from, like as far as wiring it in, the hardest part is getting the wires from the ceiling down to wherever your charge controller is. That's the hardest part to any of it. So it's not that hard of a project and just give it a try if you're the DIY kind of person. You might wanna have somebody smarter than me though. That's why I'm just telling you how I did it and not necessarily trying to teach you how to do it. So take a look at what I got here and give me your thoughts. You think this system will work for what I need it for, which is just to keep the battery charged? I sure hope so, because it's 300 watts and it's just uh, sitting there most of the time. So, so I'll catch up to you guys later on another video. Thanks for watching. Be sure to hit that like button. Do not forget to hit that subscribe button.